Hi, shalom friends. Uh, the title of this YouTube is, Did You Fulfill Your Mission in Life? This is a, a story that actually happened in the late 70s. Uh, under the Knesset of Menachem Begin, there was a minister uh, of the, somehow, I'm not sure what his official title was, but his name was Shmuel Tamir. At that time, uh, Israel was struggling um, economically, uh, like what else is new, right? And not only that, but there seemed to be not a shortage of food, but according to the projection that they had in terms of population growth and immigration, it would seem that um, the food supply was not really adequate and certainly not lavish. So this Shmuel Tamir, in a very real way, was concerned about the future and uh, was wondering that there's so much emphasis in Judaism about having large families, perhaps uh, they should change the message a little bit. Start with, it's no mitzvah to have a large family if you're going to bring into the world more children that are going to increase in, um, you know, in the food consumption. In addition to which, together with that, went another question, and that is, in the very early stages of pregnancy, can we encourage abortion? Now, this Shmuel Tamir is traditional. Not as far as I know, he wasn't uh, completely observant, but certainly had tremendous respect for the Jewish traditions. He himself, obviously, is Jewish. And he consulted with the son of, uh, of, of, of a former uh, teacher of his, there was a tzaddik whose name was Rabbi Arya Levine. Incidentally, there's a book out already over 30 years called The Tzaddik in Our Time. Very beautiful book about Rabbi Arya Levine. Uh, he was involved when, when the British mandate was there. Okay, I digress. And he left over a son. So Shmuel Tamir was, was, was a chassid, if you could call that, of Rabbi Arya Levine. Uh, Rabbi Arya Levine went to heaven, and he had a son. Uh, I think, believe his name is Rafal. So he decided to talk with the son of Rabaria, and he goes to Reb Rafal, and he says, you know, I'm really concerned about uh, the economics, and uh, I'd like to hear your position and your outlook on abortion in particular. So Rafal said, I'll tell you something which is very moving to you, something that happened with my father. He said, a couple came to my father, Reb Arya, um, and at that time, what we see today as economic deprivation was really compounded. It was really a time when people had very little. And this couple had one baby, one child. Uh, the father and the mother, both of them wanted to expand the economic possibilities, so they were both going to school. So we had two parents not both working, but both essentially half-time students or full-time students, maybe for the father. Plus, they're keeping, you know, they're, they're nourishing their child. And now she's pregnant. So they came to Reb Arya, a blessed memory, to ask, can they do an abortion? It's just simply not working out for them to take, bring another child when they're so overwhelmed with responsibility, plus they had very little in terms of economics. So Rafal says to Shmuel, my father said, no, you cannot do the abortion, and gave them three reasons. The first reason that he gave was that according to Jewish law, you have to have two children, preferably or a male and a female. You only have one. So if you want to follow the Jewish traditions and observance, you should bring in two children into this world before you even ask such a question. The second reason is, after all, who, who gives food to this world? It's God. You have to have a little faith in the Almighty God. So what are you worried about? You're not starving. It's tight. And you have one child, and it's tight. What are you concerned? That a second child will, God will suddenly say, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't support this family? Of course not. You need faith and trust, and therefore, absolutely, you can't do an abortion based on, can God provide for me? Of course he can. So those are two good reasons. But then he gave a third reason. The third reason is, were you to have asked me before pregnancy, can you do birth control? That would have been 
a question that had to be seriously considered. But you're already pregnant, which means that there is a soul waiting to be born. And this is a body waiting for its soul. Every soul has a mission which only it could fulfill. And that's why it's being sent down so it could fulfill its mission. Well, based on that, you cannot do an abortion because the mission that's awaiting this soul has to be fulfilled through this soul and not through anyone else. So Shmuel's listening, and with sort of a smile on his face, he said, well, did that child ever fulfill the mission? To which Rafal answered, I can't answer that. Only you can answer that. He said, what do you mean only I can answer that? Why me? So he said, because you were that child. Essentially, your parents came to my father to ask when, you, when your mom was pregnant with you. So you ask, when my father said to your mom, you have a mission, only you can answer that question. It's a really thoughtful story, and it's one of the nice stories which happened, really. And it's something which is worthwhile to think about because in, in a very short couple of days, we will be celebrating the festival when God gives the Torah to the Jewish people. Over 3,300 years ago, this takes place. And of course, God, when God gave the Torah to the Jewish nation, the Jewish family, the Jewish people, he essentially delegated each and every one of us with a mission. I have my instructions. I'm giving you my instructions. And now you spend your lifetime to fulfill to the best of your ability this very special mission and goal that I have for you. So as we think about the upcoming holiday, and of course there are the beautiful customs of eating dairy and staying up and decorating the house with flowers and so on, I think it's a, a thoughtful question. Did I fulfill the mission which, which I was created for? And of course... The fact that you could ask such a question means that that in itself is part of the mission, to every once in a while, to take stock and to reflect what I am living, what am I living for? I am a Jew. How am I expressing my Jewishness or my identity? And finally, God's goal for creation, am I playing my part in it properly? Of course, the answer that we should be given constantly is, yes, 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 you are fulfilling your mission, you are, you, you are expressing your Yiddishkeit, but as our Rebbe would often say, if good is good, is better not better? Shalom.